Hello, it's Alice, and we're here at the RPS sessions at Res 2019, and I'm here with Eric and Steve, and they're going to show us Beyond Blue, which is a really beautiful looking game, and I'm really excited to see more about it. So do you want to tell us about Beyond Blue? Cool. Uh, thanks for having us, by the way. <laughs> Thank Again. you for being here. Um, <laughs> we just didn't get off the couch from the last one. <laughs> the, so Beyond Blue um, is a game that Eline Media is developing in partnership with the BBC. Uh -huh. So our last game, uh, Never Alone, back in 2014, um, did very well, and we were fortunate enough to win a BAFTA, and it caught the attention of wow. the BBC. That's amazing. And so they reached out to us saying, um, if we did a sequel for Blue Planet and gave you all of the footage and all of the research, would you be interested in turning that into a game? That's Which incredible. Which don't say no to an yeah, opportunity like that. Definitely not. Um, and so what we're watching now is Beyond Blue is the, the culmination of those efforts. Okay. Um, so it's been in production for about two and a half years and, uh, so in terms of actual conversations and about a year and a half proper. Um, what you're doing is playing as Mirai, who is a deep water, uh, underwater researcher and explorer. Okay. Um, and so she and her team are called to the South China Sea and they need to figure out what uh, some of the unusual biological activity that's taking place there. Okay. And then um, swim around discovering, make a couple of choices. Uh, There's a very narrative driven game and so the choices that you make will actually impact things as you kind of swim and go through. That's um, really cool. So part of what Elaine does is we like to kind of set up, you know, a little bit of a history of what's going on. And mm -hmm. so the art style that you're seeing now is one that um, one of our artists uh, in studio kind of created to give a sense of the flashback and kind of lay out who people were. I know I'm talking over it, but people are just going to have to buy the game to figure <laughs> out what it was. Um, and that'll be perfectly fine. Um, the game itself, much like a lot of things that uh, Elon Media does, we have what we're going to be calling uh, Ocean Insights within okay. the game. And the Ocean Insights is as players um, are exploring and doing different things, and we'll see once Eric actually gets into the game it's, uh, proper, then we can... Um, you have little snippets of interviews and documentaries and footage that you haven't seen from Blue Planet 2 within oh. the game that you unlock to learn a little bit more about uh, the ocean and what it is that you're doing there. So it's like an interactive Blue Planet? It is in some ways a very much an interactive Blue Planet. A lot of the shots that you'll actually kind of um, either you've seen in our trailer or that you'll see in this game are inspired by a lot of the footage that kind of came out of it. Um, we have an editor on staff that is going through the hundreds of thousands of hours of footage. Yeah, I can imagine that, that's a lot. Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> quite a lot. She is very busy, but knows a lot about fish now, yeah. which has been pretty fantastic. Good for pub uh, quizzes. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> exactly. should be perfect for pub quizzes. Um, and so this is one of the biomes that we are just releasing for the first time. Um, and so that so visitors to Res are actually going to be the first um, in the EU and the UK to actually play oh. um, this particular biome. This is the Atoll. So it's one of the shallower uh, biomes that exists uh, within the game. Um, our last demo highlighted the Twilight Zone, which okay. is much more gray, barren. Um, yeah, I saw the darker yeah, one. Yeah, the much darker one. The sea scares me, so that darker one was quite terrifying for we me. We get that a lot. So we've yeah. had a lot of, um, <laughs> I believe it's Thessalophobia. Um, mm. It's the fear of the open ocean. We've yeah. had people that walk by our booth pretty regularly at these conventions and shows. Um, I don't want to play it. I don't want to play it. I don't want to play oh, it. Oh, really? I will assure people now that are watching this demo, uh, you can see that Mirai is not wearing any kind of scuba gear or mm -hmm. tanks. What we have done is set this game about... 20 years in the future. We have a okay. lot of scientists on our staff, and so we've asked, what's the moonshot? If you had a NASA-level budget, what would you do? Mm -hmm. um, where would technology be? Um, and a lot of people are saying that the rebreather technology is pretty close to getting to a point where, if 20 years from now, you're not going to have to worry about drowning in the game. Oh, so, lovely. So That's we want good. people to be able to be as immersed as possible mm -hmm. within the environment, so you're not going to worry about drowning. Um, you're not going to be eaten by a shark. Okay. This, um, this is not Subnautica. You're, there's no giant leviathan that's going to come out of nowhere. Okay. It's very much based in reality. Okay. Um, so at this depth, at the atoll depth, the creatures and animals that you're seeing are accurate to that depth in the water column. Uh, the last build that you saw, mm -hmm. um, the creatures that you run into there are accurate. We also do have the Midnight Zone, which is way easier for our graphics guys to render because it's black. <laughs> um, that uh, you'll be navigating via bioluminescence. Yeah, well, and that one, I will fully admit, is a little bit creepy. Mm -hmm. You're still not going to be put in any kind of danger because we don't want people to get pulled out of that particular immersive experience. If there is an element of things that where you don't necessarily want to be or you can't go because it's a dangerous situation, like mm -hmm. a hot vent, okay. uh, you'd be actually sending in drones uh, to do that work for you. Okay, so there's, there's no fear of anything in this really it's not particularly that's okay. not that's not necessarily a story we want to get across we okay. want to get across and we realized that we were working with um 
an international team of scientists and that the scientists all get into what they do for different reasons. Okay. Um, some are interested in the research, some are trying to advance, uh, look for medicine, some are interested for you know, corporate concerns and things like that. And so you actually have to kind of play off um, those challenges and make the decisions based on like what you think, and that will affect things going forward. So we want people to do that. All of the heavy decision making is actually gonna take place on the story. Okay. Or, oh, I'm sorry, on, um, on the submarine that you have. Oh, okay. So you can kind of swim around. Like what Eric is doing right now is um, utilizing the scanning mechanic that exists. It's a heads up system within your helmet uh, that gives you creature information um, about what the behaviors are and what's going on there. Um, so you can see like, you know, the humpback whales, uh, males vocalize through very complex songs that may last for hours, uh, gives size and specs and things like that. And all that's accurate to scale. Um, and so as you scan things, you'll actually, some of the creatures you'll be able to name. And so you'll be following them through on their journey as well. Oh, that's lovely. Which is kind of fun. That's really nice. Yeah, I love nature and I love I love animals, but the the like unknowing of the ocean is like really quite... Well, okay. and it's, we know more about the surface of Mars than we do about the depths right. of the ocean. Yeah. Um, and so what we're doing, and thankfully with the help of the BBC, we have access to the science and the research that kind of indicate this, is give people a better idea of what's going on out there actually in the depths. Mm -hmm. um, and because it is a big, vast, unknown world, and a lot of the actions and stuff that we are taking are affecting it in some way. And mm -hmm. we're not going to, we're not very soapboxy. We're not very preachy. It's just kind of not our style. Yeah. We are simply pre presenting the information as it currently is. Mm -hmm. And then people can make that decision based on, you know, their own conclusions and things. That's fair enough. Um, one of the things I guess we haven't talked about is the game itself will be out uh, PC and all consoles. Mm -hmm. uh, and that we are looking at having it come out probably mid to end of I August of this, this particular year. Oh, okay. So pretty soon then. No It'll be pretty that, soon. Um, I'll probably end up picking up. Oh, that'd be nice. Yeah. It would be, it'd be quite lovely. I'm big into games like this and anything that's like pretty and relaxing and also informative and educational. We, and like. <laughs> it's so busy, loud show floors like what's going on in mm. Res right now. Um, we were at PAX East last week. Um, decibels get kind of high up there and we see yeah. people who will sit down, put on the headphones, play the game. They literally come up for air at the end of it. They go through because it's that relaxing kind of conning. Mm. Um, can hear a little bit of the ambient uh, sounds and music. Yeah, we are working lovely. with a lot of acoustics, um, uh, like oceanographers and marine, marine biologists, to make sure that we've got like the clicking of the dolphins mm. and everything kind of as accurate as we possibly can. Yeah, it sounds incredible. It looks incredible as well. Thank it's you very something much. Something to get lost in. We try. Um, the game itself will probably we're looking at. I'm going to guess like seven to ten hours. Um, oh wow! That will really okay. kind of depend on things that might get trunking down based on how we actually kind of change out some of the mechanics. This is only the second demo that we've done. Okay. Um, and we are a small team. It's like about seven people that are working on this one. Oh, really? Yeah. Looks really nice. Thank you very much. So, um, what else do we got, Eric? Anything? <laughs> Feedback? Yeah. All right. Solid. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, um, <clears throat> this is a kind of a, a mini game where you're tracking down kind of your audio signals to identify kind of your oh. next waypoints here. So Okay. You're, you're tracking to kind of hear where the sounds are to identify what creatures and kind of activities happening in that area. Okay. And so as you're like, as you're researching and like as you're exploring, it will actually, the story will carry you through multiple depths, um, which will okay. take, so it'll take you from the atoll to the twilight to the midnight. So oh. we're not diving folks that are a little bit more afraid of things mm -hmm. um, deeper into the water. We did work one show um, in Texas last year actually where there was a surprising number of people who were terrified by whales. Uh, whales? Whales. Oh, that's interesting. Um, not the sharks. They love the sharks. The sharks are great. Okay. Uh, they wouldn't go near the game because it was whales. So we should mm. warn people now. Uh, the whales are a main feature. <laughs> right. That exists within the game, just so everybody's got a heads up on that one particular mm. note. Um, the game itself, um, we've brought in uh, a writer who also worked on some of the Assassin's Creed series. Uh, she also worked on Horizon Zero Dawn and won an award for that as well. She is one of the people who is doing the writing for the game. So okay. the narrative elements that carry us through are you know, being picked up by um, a great team on our end of things as well. And yes. so we're really kind of looking forward to sharing out the story of things go forth. Um, this so scene cute. in particular mm. that we're looking at is one that was directly inspired by um, the footage that we've gotten from Blue Planet 2 is they had caught dolphins kind of playing and passing things back and forth and basically playing catch with themselves. Um, and that, so we Sorry. wanted to make sure that we were, were kind of, you know, covering all the bases Enjoy. of what's 
being discovered and things like that. Um, yeah, that's been really lovely. Extremely fortunate in the partnership with you, uh, working with producers from uh, there was an episode of Blue Planet Two called The Deep. Um, mm -hmm. And the producer of that particular episode is going to be helping us out, um, make sure that we've got everything as accurate as possible. And she'll be one of the people that you're hearing from when we're doing the Ocean Insights. Oh, okay. So there'll be about an hour's worth of footage mm -hmm. that is documentary style. Um, so that you don't have to, players don't have to watch it if they don't want to. Mm -hmm. But they have the ability to I kind of, you know, when, you know, we're talking about... We're talking about uh, the whale shark right now, and mm -hmm. like you know, you can take a snippet to learn about the whale sharks and you know where they where they have their nurseries and where they've got their hatchings and things like that. Um, That's really lovely. Which is a nice little uh, bonus kick yeah. to the game. And we found that a lot of people watched the insights, you know, during oh. Never Alone. Right. So without a doubt. Oh, okay. Very very popular part of that game. Yeah, I can imagine it's um, just a nice way of feeling more connected to what you're exploring in the game, I suppose, just so that you feel that little bit more. Learned. We try to bill ourselves as a, a double bottom line company, and so we're we're out to make you know consumer friendly games that are fun. But we mm -hmm. also want to make sure that we're putting out like you know a positive social good into the world, mm -hmm. and that we're um, we're asking people to take a little bit more away from it. Mm -hmm. um, a fun anecdote about this one is we had um, there's an item that Eric's going to swim down and run into, and we wanted a, a shark to be circling, you know the cave as you okay. head down there um we went back to our devs and they gave us an entire school of sharks swimming around oh my goodness so um they are having a great time with it as mm -hmm. well we've got an amazing artist um on the team by wow, the name of kyle it, who's doing all of the art of all the fish he's researching everything down Can to the exact stuff? detail working so with um our on staff scientists as well to make sure that they're accurate mm -hmm. um there's a gentleman who is doing all of the underwater animation of things who's spent his life studying essentially basically how things move underwater um, so we're fortunate right. enough that we know that uh, like underwater that. games themselves are extremely underwater levels are always so popular in video games. Mm -hmm. So we figured that we were taking a little bit of a risk doing this, but with things like Subnautica and um, Endless Ocean and others and Abzu and Abzu yeah. exactly um, that people are getting used to thinking more three dimensionally in the space that they exist within. Yeah, it's kind of nice having a game that's like this that is realistic in a like in a sense of it's completely modeled on everything that's real life and you're completely taking a massive interest in it all and you're probably all going to be massive ocean fanatics by the end of it. Oh, I think we I think a lot of us are at the moment um already and then it is the we don't necessarily need to over exaggerate anything. The world that mm. exists within the depths that we haven't necessarily seen and explored is wild and weird enough mm. that we have no need to kind of you know, expound upon it. We can just show things that exist as they currently are and mm -hmm. most people won't believe that they are true. Yeah. Yeah, that's why. It's kind of why I love the ocean. Kind of why I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if we can convert you at some point. Mm. I think we. I think we can get you over to our side of things. I did try scuba diving once, and I was really young, and I, w I couldn't get heavy enough to sink, so I just kept floating to the top, and it was really m massive letdown. So, this is gonna answer all my dreams about scuba diving, hopefully, um, and show me what I missed out on. <laughs> uh, all those years ago. I was gonna say, especially in the corals here, which is where a lot of the scuba diving obviously uh, takes mm. place out in the world. Um, we know we recognize that a lot of the coral right now is unfortunately suffering from bleaching and things like this. This particular mm. zone doesn't necessarily, and thankfully, isn't impacted by that. Uh, this is a south of, or it's a slice of the South China Sea. Okay. Um, there is a phenomenal amount of human activity um, that people are experiencing there, and mm. or that the biological activity um, is kind of running into. And you're seeing groupings of animals that you don't necessarily find anywhere else in the world taking place there, which is why um, we put this our game in that particular prepared. locale. Okay. And so, um, the sperm whales that you see on screen now are kind of one of the main characters um, within the game as well. And so you'll be tracking some of uh, the lives and livelihoods. We're realizing, um, scientists are realizing that they've got way more complex social patterns than we even realized. Okay. Um, and so you're sort of going to be exploring a lot of that communication, that interaction, and um, how they interact on a one-to-one -one basis. She's not here. Maybe she's there. You just so you swim by a... Uh, a juvenile as we can speak. I the scanners so it lets me scan them again? Yeah, it's pretty epic actually. It feels very immersive, which uh, is nice. Thank you. That's that's <laughs> fantastic. It's what we've sort of been trying for. I mean, it's these are these the largest predators on the planet with the largest brain as well, and it's incredible to see. Yeah, it is. It's, it's just something that you don't expect to see like close up, and it just feel like there's a lot of love and a lot of attention to detail in it, which helps make you feel like you're actually being able to explore it yourself, which is Damn. nice. We do appreciate that. That's definitely We're trying. Can you send the sub to pick me up? I'm done for now. 
Cool. It's lovely. Thank you. So thank you so much. Um, we will hopefully, if you're here at Res, go and check it out on the show floor. And if you're not here at Res, then pick it up in August. Yeah, pick it up in August. You can find us at uh, beyondbluegame.com um, cool. and visit what are we, at Beyond Blue on Twitter. At Be- Beyond Blue Game on um, cool. all the social media channels. Perfect. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks it's for been lovely to meet you. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, thank you.